Hey, thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors and welcome to Flaming Gorge. You know, a lot of people, a lot of fishermen are putting their ice fishing gear away for the season. You know, spring not too far off, but there's still lots of ice fishing to be had. Up here at Flaming Gorge, we're actually on the Utah side of the gorge. Here in Sheep Creek, there's five, seven, eight inches of ice. Plenty to get out on, plenty safe. We're hoping to catch the uh, Grand Slam here at uh, Flaming Gorge. We're gonna try and catch uh, rainbow trout, cutthroat, lake trout, bourbon at night. We may even try and latch into a coke or two. Hey, let's go get on the ice. Oh yeah, there's two. Can you see me smiling? Yeah, yeah, because there's fish. Yeah. <laughs> We're fishing with my buddy Ryan, the DWR project leader here at the Gorge, and the Valdez family, the new owners of Buckboard Marina. So our first target this morning is rainbows or kokanees or maybe some uh, lake trout. Um, for kokanee, I found, at least from my experience up at Strawberry where I've caught them, is you have to, you have to move around a lot. You will punch a bunch of holes, check different depths until you find them, or you just pick a spot uh, that you're pretty confident in. Hey, what was all that commotion up here? Kokanee. Kokanee, nice. Good looking fish, too. Yeah, nice fish. There, there's one on my jig right now. What's your technique? So what we're doing is we're just dropping down about 35 feet. Well, there's 35 feet of water. We're going about half the water column, and we're just jigging and twitching and jigging and twitching and just mostly dead stick twitch and just real subtle strike. You notice how many friends you have when you catch a coke? Everybody Ooh. loves you. I love it. Wants to fish by you. Oh, here though. <laughs> you got to send up the shallows. I'll take, I'll take care of this for you. Take that one, please. Yeah. Good luck, <laughs> Kokanee are a schooling fish and Tony has found them back in a bay. Finding them is your first step. Next, you've got to entice them to bite. We're using spoons in a constant jigging motion and a little pause. They're not eating your offerings out of hunger, but out of aggression. What is it? Smokin' nice. Once you catch a Coke, don't waste any time. Get down as soon as you can and try and catch another before the school leaves. Oh, there are. He's on you. Oh, nice. Saw that. Feeling like a Coke? Mm, actually, it feels like a Laker. No way. It's a big Laker. That ain't good. <laughs> I mean, it is good. What's your hypothesis here? Um, at this point, with that camera in my face, I'm just hoping I land it. <laughs> What's your biggest Laker through the ice? Oh. Low teens. Huh? <laughs> That's cool. And this is pretty light tackle, so. Yeah, it's making it look bigger than it probably is. Um, I think it's pretty good fish. Do you? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. It's bigger than anything you're gonna catch. Yeah, right. <laughs> no doubt in my mind about that. You just never know. That's the beauty of Flaming Gorge. We need a Laker for our Grand Slam. We do. We need this one. This has been a while. Here he comes. Okay. Is it oh. <laughs> That's the problem with this size class. It just seems like these are the fighters. Yeah. You know, everybody always wants a 30, 40 pounder, but in my experience, these tens, low teens, oh my gosh. They just don't give up. Oh. Nice. Biologists have encouraged anglers to keep smaller lake trout to help thin their population. This fish is just big enough, so Ryan decides to let him go. And just be real careful when you do handle him, you know. I'm holding his gill plate, but I'm real careful to keep my fingers out of his gills. Cradle him a little bit. There he goes. Sweet. That's a fatty. That, that's a good one. <laughs> Molesy's hooked up. Kokanee. A good one. What is it about these Cokes, TJ, that you like so much? Probably eating them. Just eating them, huh? Just eating them. They're fun to catch, too. They fight better than any other trout. They're just fun. They're back down there, Adam. They're down about 30 or 26 feet. There's a bunch of them. These are some of the spoons that we use today. Don't forget to tip your lures with gulp maggots and apply a coating of kokanee scent. To locate schools of kokanee, start where you catch them in the summer. If you don't find them there, try a little shallower. 
Come on, puppy. Coconut! Sweet! Gosh, they're so finicky. Old TJ was catching kokanee on uh, the buzz bomb, so I switched over, just happened to have one in my tackle box. First time I've ever caught one like that on a buzz bomb, so the skunk is off. Ooh, solid. It's a nice rainbow. Nice fat rainbow. Got a lot of nice fish today. Rainbows, cokes, Lakers. Lakers. Now we just need burbot and cutthroat. Yeah, we just look in shallow bays on the gorge, just find a back bay and just, uh, you know, 40, 50, 60 feet of water. They're, they're kind of hard. They're moving through like we've noticed today. And just, you just got to put your time in. You know, it's just not a thing you're going to come out and just catch one after another, but you can definitely catch a limit of them. When Tony and his wife, Jen, bought Buckboard Marina last year, they decided they wanted to help fisheries biologists with their small lake trout concerns. You see, biologists believe the small lake trout population at the gorge is high. So to help, Buckboard Marina started a free population contest. 100 small lake trout were tagged in the fall, and Buckboard Marina offered anyone that caught a tagged fish 100 bucks and a chance at winning one of two boats and a guided fishing trip. Yeah, it's been a good contest. How, how's it been going on? Good, good. We've got, uh, we picked up eight fish, which is great, you know. Eight tagged. Eight tagged fish, sorry, yeah. yeah. Eight tagged fish. Yeah, we've had some really good success on high limit rates, guys picking up a lot of nice pups. The contest continues through the end of March. Biologists say they've noticed a substantial increase in the amount of Lakers kept, and their data off of this year's burbot bash confirmed that anglers are keeping more smaller lake trout. This year, there was a lot more lake trout catch, and I think a lot of that was driven by the population control contest. People were just fishing for lake trout when they weren't fishing for burbot. Uh, but yeah, 60% of those were harvested. That's a, that's a big increase in harvest rate for us. Historically, it was in the 20% range, about tripled the harvest rate in the last year or so. Good. Uh, since we started doing all this outreach, thanks to people like you and Tony, they're really good to eat, and so it's beneficial for the angler too. Also, on April 4th, we're gonna have our grand opening and the ceremonies on Saturday and give away our prizes. And like I say, we uh, unexpected eight tags. I mean, it's, what a thing. <laughs> Buddy Ryan's already out here. Hopefully he's got some fish on the deck. Boy, look at that view. The sun goes down, beautiful. Sheep Creek is one of the most beautiful places in Utah. If you've never been here, fishing, boating, hunting, whatever. Man, you gotta come check it out. It's just gorgeous. So you're seeing fish off, come off the bottom, huh? Yeah, I just had some more. Oh, here's a fish fish. This side of the reservoir doesn't always freeze. It really doesn't. Since I've worked up here since 2006, I've only fished Sheep Creek four times, four seasons. So we've had good enough ice to fish it. So yeah, this is kind of a, a novelty. Oh. Nice. But first fish of the night. Maybe we'll get some more for the burbot come in. Last year we caught some pretty nice cutthroats back here while fishing for rainbows and then uh, even the occasional kokanee. There he is. Come on, be a cutty. Ooh, it's a good fish, whatever it is. Nice. I spent a lot of time exploring in here and even gotten into some lake trout occasionally, but yeah, I really enjoy just fishing over here. Good fighting fish. It's a rainbow. Oh, wait, no. Oh, it's a cutthroat. No, it's a rainbow. Dang it, I thought it was a cutty. That was on an orange cutter bug, just with a little night crawler. Um, James Bradshaw special. One of my favorite lures is that orange. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Hey, buddy. Once the sun started to set, it was time to finish off our slam by targeting bourbon. There he is. Nice job. Burbot. Hey, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. It's a little bugger, but we got him. We'll take it. Yeah. In this reach of the reservoir, when we were doing our netting this fall, abundance for burbot almost tripled. That's definitely a concern for us. We're already starting to see impacts to the smallmouth bass population. Bite is picking up. Another burb. 
the canyons always function differently in terms of fishery compared to the rest of the reservoir. So we really don't know what the long-term impacts are gonna be. But yeah, it definitely has me concerned right now. Oh, dry jacker. Looks like a pretty hefty fish. Big old better burbot, a little better. First burbot in Utah? First burbot, that's right. First burbot in Utah. Now that I think about it, it is, isn't it? Yeah, boy. Nice. Thanks for doing your part. Yep. That's a pretty good haul, Ryan. I mean, uh, there's what, three limits of Cokes there. We caught some Lakers, rainbows. We just, the only thing we missed out were the cutthroat. Yeah, missed out on a cutthroat, but we got some quality fillets right there. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna be eating good tonight. At least some of us. Some of us. TJ's gonna be eating well. He's got his biggest Coke, and Leroy got his first lake trout. Hey, uh, there's still a chance for people to come up here and uh, participate in the tag fishing contest for the Little Pups. A few more weeks left. Yeah, we got a few more weeks. Plenty of ice. The ice is still thick and we're gonna have ice for another month, so why not get up here and do this? Yeah, one of those lucky buggers who caught one of those eight tag fish is gonna walk away with a boat, or two, I guess. There's two boats and then a, a kokanee fishing trip. Yeah. You're crazy not to enter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. Remind you to get out with your family, your friends. Get out on the ice while it still lasts and make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.